Welcome to day two of the Bacardi 2018 Moth Worlds here in Bermuda. Today is another interesting day. Conditions quite similar to yesterday, maybe a little bit lower. The PRO David Campbell James has decided to run the race course a little bit further south, a little bit flatter water and trying to get four races in. We've got to get back on schedule. Let's see what these guys can do. So we're uh, still in the park here. The guys are frantically getting ready to hit the ramp. Rory, bit of a problem yesterday. What happened? Yeah, it was um, pretty fruity up the top mark. I, I did a bear away. I went about 20 metres and then um, boat came over to weather and I, I hit the water at my ribs quite hard and I bounced along and um, did it some damage. And I've got some, some bruising there, but I'm okay. A few painkillers and I'm good to go, I think. All right, buddy. Good luck today. All right, cheers, lads. Here we are, day two of the 2018 Bacardi Moth World Titles here on the Great Sound in Bermuda. We currently have about 15 to 20 nights with a 10 to 15 degree wind shifts, which is perfect moth conditions. The big news of the day so far is the current leader and world champion Paul Goodison has just been towed back to shore with a broken rig. So that opens the game and here we go with 10 seconds left. Everybody is up and foiling and coming hard at the pin. Could be a clear start, we're away. All clear and Ben Payton hits the pin and starts to shoot left. Gooby's going around the top mark now, and off he goes. Another 1.6 nautical miles to the bottom. Kyle Stoneham now going around the top mark. Chased hard by Dave Kennefick from Ireland. Zach Maxim just low riding a little bit to get up to that top mark. The fairway's there. Another nice Sea Tech machine. He's got plenty of sponsors on the uh, side of the sail there, which he'd like to thank, no doubt. But it's all about Ian Jensen taking race number three. We have uh, Goody and Gooby. Goody's made it back out on the track, so they are right next to each other. Goody and Gooby just setting up in the middle of the course. We've got a port end starter. We've got a couple of port end starters. This could be interesting. And he's nailed it. The Italian Francesco Rudy, has he got across? I think he has. He's got a couple of stairs to take. Oh, he might just sneak across. There, uh, I think it's uh, Matty Chewy just going across him to Francesco Bruni. Big call, but he's nailed it. Big Port Ender. We have lots going on. We have Peyton. We have Brad Funk. We have Matty Chew, another Port Hen hero from the start. Then we have Teddy Hackney. Then we have Rome Kirby. Then we have Benoit Marie. It is all happening here at the top mark with some close racing. Victor just going through his jive now, needs to nail it because Ben Payton's nailed his. Oh, Victor put the wing in. He knows how to lose some positions. He needs to get it up because these two behind him, including Francois, uh, Benoit Marie, are coming in hard. Victor's got it going again. Payton's sending it down low. Will he have enough momentum to get over the line? I think Victor's just got it in front of Payton. And then Benoit Marie, great finish there. On the second day of racing, we have three port enders. We have Matty Chu, we have Francesco Bruni, and coming in super hard is Kyle Stoneman. And here we go, and it looks like they're going to get it off again. Francesco Bruni, nice start. close but he's got it first Jensen second just behind is Paul Goodison he's having a great day look at him he's pumped yes there's plenty on here including Ian Jensen and they're off and running I don't think all eight are going to get through there I'm definitely all eight are not going to get through there it is very very tight cross big pack on the port enders and they're off very very clean start but had some on there, the boys. Rome Kirby down to Leward, tried to shut him out. And 
apart from his first race of the day where he had breakages, he's had a very, very good day out again. For the current world champion, Paul Goodison, over he goes. Francesco's coming in super hot. Will he get over the top of him? This is a great finish, Teddy needs the hike. Hike hard, Teddy, has he got it? He's pumping, I think he's got it, just in front of Francesco Bruni for his fourth third of the day. Mate, the SeaTech mobile, you and this little baby just starting yeah, to work the, each other yeah, out. Yeah, the Tropic Thunder and I finally, you know, we made a pact this morning that we're gonna go out and you know put some single digit numbers on the board, so we did that. Um, yeah, thanks to SeaTech, I had the SeaTech rig and SeaTech boom working for me today, so that was good. And second in a world title, like second, you know, to be couple of seconds, mate. Couple of seconds in, in any race <laughs> Pocket is juice. awesome. To do it in a world titles, right? You got to be stoked. Yeah, I was pretty happy. It was good. He was a fair way in front, but you know, I was battling out with Bruni and Chewy, so that was good. Yeah, it was had a good day. Bit of an exciting start of the day, mate. A bit too exciting. Yeah, we went out there. It was all feeling good, and then the marsh just fell over the back of the boat and made a bit of a mess of the fairings and all the rest of the stuff. But luckily, uh, Brett came along with Julia in, in the ribbon kind of got me in. Uh, the Maguire Shore team did their finest to uh, patch me back up and then finally made it back out for the for the second race of the day. Uh, making our way in here to Francesco Bruni. Bruni, can you please tell us your results for today? Three. And three. And three. And three. And three. And three. That's consistency, <laughs> folks. <laughs> well, there you have it. Four great races today out in the Great Sound of Bermuda. Tomorrow looks a little bit lighter. So that'll be interesting, but one thing's certain, it's time for one of these.